Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be, uh, to be here today. So today I was expecting you know, Gibraltar to exceed the EU. Um, because Gibraltar is actually linked with the UK, uh, but it's not happening. So you see, you know, regulation and it's not always happening like, like we think it's happening. So I'm very, you know, thrilled to, uh, to welcome you to what we're very excited about within the Gibraltar Stock Exchange Group is capital markets. So capital markets is something, is one of the applications that blockchain could help to, uh, to actually, you know, transform a whole, a whole industry. Um, a bit of myself, so my background is capital markets, uh, investment bank, brokerage, financial services, and I probably, like many of you, discovered Bitcoin four years ago. Um, I found like the industry and the technology around that, you know, mind-blowing. I ride, I rode like probably some of you, uh, the excitement around 2017 about cryptocurrencies, uh, but behind that, uh, we can consider cryptocurrencies in some respect as a form of uh, experiment. What I want to talk to you today is about, uh, obviously, the way Gibraltar Stock Exchange is actually positioning itself in regards to the so-called uh, digital securities, which we believe it's a huge market. But before in doing this, I would like to give you an update on this, uh, you know, smart securities or digital securities market. Interesting to, to give you some, some thoughts and probably some reality to check. Uh, and before that, probably worth to give you um, an overview of capital markets and the way it's going to evolve towards, towards finance 2.0. So first of all, how many people in the room are actually involved in capital markets? Okay, great. So capital markets, what it is, it's a way to connect people who have capital, investors, with those ones who are in need of capital, and we're talking about governments, but as well companies. Companies, the full spectrum from startups, SMEs, to up to very large um, organizations and, and companies. So they're looking to raise money. Another aspect about capital markets is it's uh, split in two different, let's say, markets. The, prim the primary market, whereby you raise the funds and then you issue the securities. That is what we call listing. And then the second phase is secondary market, whereby those very securities are now traded. So if we look back in 2017 with the cryptocurrency market, Everything was pretty much, you know, going from issuance to listing immediately, more or less. Securities market works a bit differently. There's a lot of regulation around that. But overall, capital markets uh, present a, a huge opportunity. Another point about capital markets, they already been disrupted 30, 40 years ago. We went from the analog era, which was paper certificate, to... Uh, to um, the electronic uh, trading, so moving everything electronically. What's going to happen next, and that's why we're very excited about this, is capital markets will shift now towards digital, 100%. What's going to be the difference? You went from local to regional, digital will be global. Another point around that is it will be immediate versus in the current system, and we're going to go through this later on, it's a much longer process, and it will be fully automated. That's where the innovation is. If we look at the size of capital markets right now. Uh, capital markets are mainly shares and debt. We see that global securities represent around $75 trillion. Um, the debt market is $215 trillion. If you bear in mind that 30% of the debt issued has been done in the last 10 years. So the markets are growing significantly. To give you an idea, the real estate market is very similar to debt. That's huge. Uh, all those asset classes, I'm counting as well derivative, which is half a quadrillion, at some point will be tokenized. There's no other way. It has to go through digital for many reasons. So you can imagine already 
how big the numbers are. To put in perspective, the gold market right now is around 7 trillion. Cryptocurrency markets, 250 billion. So there's a huge, huge market. We see that capital markets can, 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 uh, can help. So now let's focus more about the security. Security gives you a claim on an asset. Um, and this is the way, actually, securities are, actu are processed in the current world. And as you can see, it's fairly complicated. Um, so overall, you start, you know, you want to buy a share or sell a share. You're going to have to go through a broker, which is at the bottom here. And then as a, as a seller or buyer, you need to have your asset with a custodian, which is in charge of the safeguard of those assets. From there, the broker will send an instruction, either buying or selling, through an exchange, usually a stock exchange. Um, and a bit above, you have the market maker, which are in charge of quoting you a price, a bid and an ask, a price to buy, a price to sell. Once the, the, the deal is done, um, then we enter a new phase, which is the post-trade. And that's what a lot of people might not understand well, this is where the complexity happens. Because the trade is done, and then you're going to have a new entity called the clearing house, and they are in charge to make sure that the assets that have been traded are effectively delivered. And this process uh, is called settlement and clearing. There's a number of different rules around that, there's innovation, and, and so on. But overall, the clearing house is now becoming the counterparty between the buyer and as well the counterparty against the seller. The complexity arises as well because the buyer and the seller might have a different custodian. And again, the custodian is safeguarding your assets. So because they don't necessarily need to, uh, they don't actually, um, how can I say, reconciliate, you need to create a custodian of a custodian. And that's the top bracket over there, the central security depository. It's called a CSD. CSD are very important because they make sure that the settlement will happen. You will get the shares you bought, and you will actually get the cash because you've sold that security. That's called delivery versus, versus payment, which is critical in the capital market world. From there, the CSD, which is kind of your golden source, will give the ability for the registrar to record the move of securities. So I sold my security to someone, and that needs to be recorded somewhere. That's why blockchain can actually help a lot. If you look at this system, which is obviously very complicated, very costly, think about this. Think about you going to an airport, and you give your back to, you know, at the check-in, and you put your name on a tag, the airline will actually record that, and then you leave, you go to the, the plane. But in the background, what's happening is the airline will actually remove the tag with your name, store all the luggage, you know, in, in the plane, deliver the luggages in the destination you're going, and then when you arrive at the airport, you see that there is 100 different luggages on one side and 100 different tags on the other. And you actually wonder, you know, how, who's going to be actually in charge of the reconciliation? That's pretty much what's happening here. So there's a lot, you know, blockchain can help to actually remove a lot of cost, a lot of time, and make it a lot more smooth and uh, easier to deal with. So DLT can bring a number, when I say DLT, Blockchain can bring a lot of efficiencies. Um, there's the core benefits. Uh, immuta immutability is a great one because it's a single source of trust, and that's what is probably, uh, you know, has to be improved in the current system. I'm not saying captain market are, you know, they, they work the way they work, but they can be improved massively. The blockchain, the core DLT in the middle, you have as well the compliance built-in, simply because thanks to technology, you can program templates uh, with a number of different parameters. For example, you want to issue a bond or a share, and that will prevent 
a buyer from a jurisdiction not to be able to buy. So the compliance will be built in from day one. You don't have to double check once the security is on the blockchain or trading on an exchange. The other benefits for capital markets are efficiency, a number of reduction of cost. Um, as an exchange, we're very fortunate because we've been uh, talking with a number of different financial institutions. And uh, if you're a CEO of a bank, you're very interested to actually understand um, the way you're going to actually reduce your bill by 80%. In terms of revenue as well, it can improve number of pool of liquidity, fractionalized ownership. So very exciting things. You know, you could tokenize a building and sell a portion of it to investors. The ticket of entry will be lower, so obviously um, you should attract a lot more investors. The typology, there's many different ways we look at those securities. Uh, you can call them security token, smart securities. We like digital securities by, because that's the natural evolution. Typology doesn't really matter as long as we understand we are in the securities world. The state of the market, um, I'm going to depict a fairly uh, pessimistic opinion right now because what we observe right now is um, we call it the three laws uh, in terms of security token issued. There's very few of them. The amounts raised are very tiny. Uh, there's very little trading happening, mainly in the US. And the projects are usually of low quality. And I, I say low quality not about the underlying, but about the fact that the structure around those securities uh, doesn't sometimes give you ownership. So we're more in the, between an ICO and a security token. Having said that, those projects are very beneficial for the industry because they help to understand better, to experiment, to improve the whole process. Institutional versus retail, that market unfortunately won't be for retail before a good, I, I would say five, five to 10 years, simply because the regulators need to be confident that it's already uh, traded with institutional investors, simply because regulators want to protect, uh, the role of a regulator is to protect retail, to make sure they don't lose money for no reason. And in terms of timing, that's where we think we are. If you look at smartphones, it took a good 10 years for the technology to kick in, to be adopted. For blockchain, for capital markets, we're at a very early stage. Um, it's a fact. Now there's a number of different market participants that are here and are here to actually push the industry forward. In terms of challenges, the main one is regulatory. We've been talking with a number of different projects and most of the time there is a little understanding about regulation. So regulatory is key. In Europe, once the security becomes a transferable security, so where you can trade it, uh, the issue is you need to go through a CSD. So the CSD at the top here is at the top of the box here. So CSDs right now, no one in Europe is actually, apart from some countries um, like Estonia, uh, provide this ability to, to trade um, digital securities. So regulatory is very important. CSDR is one, MIFID two, regulation in Europe. Um, so those are very complex matters that need to be dealt professionally. The other point is, the legal aspect, legal in the sense that um, you need to comply with the local regulation to make sure that not only the technology but as well what the Securities Act is telling, what you, you allowed to do to transfer a security to another. In infrastructure, we're talking more about custody and more importantly, central bank money. Because if you want that industry to step up, you need to have institutional investors. For this to happen, they need to have the confidence that whatever currency is digitized, is actually supported by a, a, you know, a competent body, and usually it's a central bank. There's a number of different milestones around the world. Um, at the top, G JSTA, that's the Japan Security Token Association, six of the largest securities firms in Japan that decided to educate in a better respect the world. That's very positive. A lot of things happening in Singapore, Hong Kong, and Switzerland. Now let me give you a quick snapshot about Gibraltar. Gibraltar is a self-governed um, uh, country. Uh, we actually uh, have a number of different industries. We have tourism, um, 
finance, obviously online gambling, gambling, bunkering, but more importantly, DLT. So in the 1st of January 2018, Gibraltar enacted one of the very first regulatory framework for DLT, regulating DLT providers. That is very, very exciting. More about the GSX group, so Gibraltar Stock Exchange Group. Um, we are probably one of the youngest exchange in the world, or at least in, probably not in the world, but at least in Europe. And we thought at the very beginning that the problem is we couldn't compete with any other major exchanges. So we had to take the decision to be 100% towards, uh, directed towards digital. So we created three different streams, exchanges. We have two exchanges, one regulated, two regulated actually, one for traditional securities, um, and another one for so-called utility tokens. Um, we have as well the technology, we have our own blockchain developed by Stacks, um, that's our tech division, and we have as well a broker dealer called Ford Capital, based out of the UK, fully regulated, and Juno is our fund administrator. So the one thing to remember today about the GSX group is we have an end-to-end -end solution that helps from the, if you, for example, if you take the example of tokenizing a venture capitalist fund, we have the capacity to advise, we have the capacity to incorporate, we have the capacity to structure, to list, more importantly, distribution, that is key, how you, you know, disperse your product. We can tokenize, we can list, soon we'll be able to trade, um, and we can offer as well custody solutions. Because the, the key point for this market to go forward is not only having an exchange, like in the cryptocurrency world, you need to have the whole ecosystem around that. That means that you need to have research, it's very important, same rules that capital market, you need to have distribution, um, and uh, you need to have you know, broker dealers that help to support your product. In terms of what's coming next, uh, we're probably one of the very first exchange of the world to allow the technical listing of fund and debt on the blockchain. This is, this is a, ma a major achievement. So far, we expect to have digital equity to be listed, uh, have the, you know, the, the regulatory requirement from our regulator in Q4, and the trading aspect will happen uh, mid-2020 next year. So we might be one of the very first exchanges to offer this uh, capability. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. We have time just for a very, very brief question. One, very brief. Please, thank you. Thank you for the interesting lecture. And my question is regarding the STO that was launched earlier this year in cooperation with the London Stock Exchange. It was one company from London launched uh, STO. So uh, I suppose that London Stock Exchange already ahead of Gibraltar in this regard. Thank you. So I, I think you're mentioning, um, I might be wrong, but I think you're mentioning a company which is, let's say, a blockchain company. Uh, they, they are not, do, they, I think it's a mining company, but they are, they, are, they are actually listed on the LSE. But as a traditional company, what they're doing is they're working on blockchain. It's a company called 2030, and uh, they are a company that actually is going to facilitate uh, STOs. It's uh, through their token factory mm -hmm. project. So, and they raised uh, three million pounds in this STO in collaboration with London Stock Exchange. Okay, so I think you're mentioning the company that is in the UK sandbox, which is under the regulatory, it's kind of a, a playground, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.